Well, another week. Um, yet another week of uh, where I third week in a row where I didn't do a second uh, week odds and ends video. We're so busy getting ready for Christmas and. Awesome. I, well, I was gonna say I'm going nuclear because my mother's gonna be here on Sunday with my stepdad and. We've been painting and staining stuff. And, and sick. And sick. Last week it was norovirus. This week Willow dragged home some horrible head cold that is running through us. And like last weekend, starting on Saturday morning, we started p patching some paint upstairs um, just to sort of make it look a little bit nicer. But it turns out that the, the paint we got two years ago can't be matched anymore. So even though we were sold matched paint, the it didn't match and so we ended up having to basically redo the entire upstairs and all this crazy stuff we had to move everything and move the tv and move the furnitures and paint the entire room and paint the it just it, i painted the downstairs walls we had to clean everything it was literally it was four days of work and he still has to touch up the bathroom i have to touch up the bathroom and we have to keep the place clean which is fun <laughs> so it's been very busy so i apologize again uh and if i sound rough it's hopefully my voice will continue through the video. Anyway. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to soldier on. Okay. From Rustem Galyavin, I think. I don't know. Spencer and Sabrina, thanks for the great videos. Have a few questions. So, oh, do you want me to read the whole thing at once or read a question? Let's read a question and I'll answer it. Okay. What are the top two to three advantages and disadvantages of classic Seiko movements against the classic Swiss movements in general? Uh, the number one disadvantage of Vintage Seiko is that parts availability is basically zero. Um, vintage Swiss, you can find darn near ever anything, because uh, Swiss stuff, they supported it for a very long time. Also, many other companies would make replacement parts. You could get Best Fit or these other companies that would make these standard replacement parts. For the most part, with Seiko, Seiko is the only person that the only company that made the parts. So, and they don't do long term support, which means when they are getting ready to stop making a watch, they stop making any support parts for it because they're not going to service them anymore. And then the, you just you can't do anything about it. It's extremely annoying. Uh, one of the advantages of Seiko is that they thankfully made a very durable watch. It's very rare to get in a Seiko, no matter what the condition is, and have it not run. Uh, Seikos are durable and strong watches, and they they take abuse with general good humor. And um, I don't know, they're they're they 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 also stylistically they're very unique. A lot of the Swiss watches kind of look like themselves. They're just kind of look kind of generic -y to me. Seiko looked like Seiko, and so they had a good look. Um, they were durable, uh, but again, the disadvantage is that they, there's no long term support in parts. Is that's tough. Uh, is the original bezel insert as important as, <coughs> sorry, original dial and hands on a 6309, or it's something I can replace with not much regret? Mine is a little damaged around the top dot. Original is always better than replacement. That's the short answer. Uh, the inserts are definitely less critical than dial and hands. Uh, once you start getting into like aftermarket dial on hands, then the, the watch is parts at that point because there are no good aftermarkets that exist. There's an okay aftermarket insert. It's made by Harold Ng, who is Yabokis. It's 90% correct. Uh, it's not quite, the anodization is not as durable as the as the originals were and it's missing a couple fine details like the the original inserts have a teeny tiny 45 degree chamfer around the inside and the tip the point of the silver marker around the pip goes over that chamfer it's it, those are two details that no one gets right so i mean i'd take a, a i'd take an original insert with wear over a reproduction any day of the week but that's me what not that if you can take the time to make all these things exactly correct, I would never see you. I guess. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, which XKX is the most collectible or simply your favorite? I'd be the 007. I mean, it's the it's the one that everybody speaks of. The close second one is the SKX 173. One of the reasons I like that one is because it Seiko actually went and they basically recreated the Seiko 6309-7290. Um, slim case. They even used the the old style sweep hand instead of using the reverse the reverse um, 
meatball or whatever the heck it is. What is it called? A lollipop, I think Reverse lollipop. Said. Instead of using the reverse lollipop, they use the old school 6309 one, which I think is very cool. And so they're nice. But for me, I like circles. So the SKX-173 has the square markers, which I don't think are as attractive as circles, because I like circles. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to learn the watchmaking craft from scratch? To the level I can clean and oil my vintage Seikos, thanks. Um, well, the easy thing is, is to get the Seiko service manuals and start reading through them and get basic tools and lots of magnification and be ready to go. That's the easy answer. The long answer is I've been doing this every day for coming on a decade now and I still there are still the things that I learn every day. There's so much to know. There's so many little tweaks and little funky things to know and so many things that I remember and I, when I think about all the stuff I know and I think about the fact that I haven't really written it down anywhere I'm gonna be it, it kind of makes me panicky because uh, I, I don't I don't even know where to, to start trying to thinking about what I only know one thing and I'm not telling what what do you know about your loom oh yes yeah, she does she knows it's her. a secret she knows the secret <laughs> the secret of my vintage loom um, I don't know, there's just, there's so much to know. There's all these weird, quirky, funky things and all the different little things like how do you deal with this kind of die fix versus that kind of die fix or this kind of shock assembly or that kind of shock assembly or how troubleshooting on, on a standard watch movement or a, versus a chronograph versus a diver versus this model diver versus that model diver versus this model chronograph versus that model chronograph. And weird stuff. Okay, the watch is doing this thing where it's hanging up and thing. Oh, okay, I, re I know what that is. And it's like all this crazy stuff to know. And it's I'm not trying to discourage anyone, but I think about it sometimes and I'm like, how do I get up in the morning? I just all this stuff in my head, and I don't have it written down anywhere. Well, I know that you learn some stuff from the manual. Cause mm. like, oh, the manuals are, are great. I was talking. Sorry. <laughs> um, about the oiling things, about you had to oil them upside down, or I don't know. Seiko, See, I listen. Sure. Seiko has some very... <laughs> the thing is, the service manuals are very useful, and they do have some basic troubleshooting stuff, which can be very helpful. Um especially when it comes to the chronographs. So, and plus, they're fun reading. They're really entertaining, and oh my God, they're great. No, reading the servicing guides is fantastic. It's so boring. Oh, it's great stuff. He tried to show me how to know what things are with numbers, and I forgot. I, I, had, I, got, I got her, because we have so many parts here, and I was like, this is how the parts system works. This is how Seiko parts system works. And so you've got uh, part 301, uh, I'm going off the top of my head, is the 301, and that's the... I think it's a cannon pinion. Anyway, but that's all cannon pinions for all Seiko movements, period. So 301 611, 611 stands for the 6106, 6105. So you have 301 cannon pinion, and which part is it? It's the, it's the, it's the, it's for the, which model for? It's for the 6106. And the whole system works that way. Um, I don't know. What? What? Like the three digit code for the, the, the 5606s is 560. It's pretty intuitive. I guess I'm not good with that, whatever. Anyway. Okay, so this one I can answer. From Mike C, man, feel better, you do look down again. <laughs> do you guys have a sapphire crystal for an XKS-013 single or double dome? We do not sell sapphire crystals. We only sell hard lex crystals, so. Yep. We stick with stock Seiko, and Seiko believed in hard lex, uh, the reason being that you have your trade-offs. Hard lex is a little bit easier to scratch, but it's extremely hard to make them shatter versus um, the scratch proofness of sapphire. But if you hit them hard enough, they'll gouge and hit them just a little bit harder than that and boop, they'll shatter. Is it like a phone and if you hit it the mm -hmm. wrong way or the right way, it'll go clunk? Yep, that's exactly right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Same thing, same stuff. Oh. Anyway, onward and upward. Okay, next is a comment. Um, from Shelf Compact, they also made a huge 50 millimeter version of the Rail Master reissue, just crazy, haha. -ha. I couldn't believe that they make one that big. That's yeah, nice. they use a pocket watch movement. They use a giant, like, Unitas pocket watch movement. I can't imagine what it looks like on my dinky wrist. <laughs> <I don't know laughs> Probably break it. 50 millimeters, that is big. Ooh, that's big. Uh, from... 
Oh crap, I didn't. Um, sorry. Which I'm one? Bit up. That one. Um, from screen name Sunset. Hello, Spencer. Is it possible if you could make a video that explains the difference in dive watches? Example, what does a plus 300 millimeter watch have that makes it a saturation diver that a 200 meter. Uh, did I say millimeter? Yes, you did. Oh, sick. <laughs> does not have perhaps you could dissect the watches and explain the build difference that makes one watch more capable than the other i suggested this in the comments in one of your past videos a couple of months ago and you thought it was a good idea i keep up the great videos i really enjoy them um, and we weren't so damn busy and sick <laughs> it just it just keeps happening saturation divers like um okay so you have you have standard standard like a standard watch that has water resistance. Do I have one? Um, this isn't... Okay, just imagine like an SKX, okay? It's just got a few little seals and it's good for 200 meters and that's fine. It's got a flat nylon seal around the crystal and it, it's for... I mean, no one's ever going to go down 200. Very few people are going to go down 200 meters. But I mean. they'll go down 200 millimeters. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Even I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then to go really deep, saturation with mixed gases, that's like people that are doing like, they're underwater, like in underwater habitats for like doing welding on like uh, oil rigs and stuff like that. And they're underwater for a really long time. The deal is, is that helium is extremely, extremely small, small atom. And helium can therefore get in through seals like on a SKX or something else like this and it pressurizes the inside of the watch. And then if you were to go up, boop, it, you go up high enough, it's going to pop the crystal off and that's the end of the watch. Rolex used to deal with this by having a helium release valve. It's like literally like a little automatic pressure release thing on the side of the watch for their sea dwellers and it would it would release the helium. Seiko said, screw that, we're gonna do something totally different. And they invented the, the, the L gasket. It literally is an L profile gasket like this. This is a 600 meter golden tuna. And so what they said, rather than dealing with like trying to find a way to let the helium out, let's just make sure it never gets in. And so it has this, it's a monocoque case, which means it's a single piece, there's no case back. There's one big, big, big thick crown seal and there's an L gasket around the crystal and the crystal is quite thick. This is an extremely simple, strong and functional design. So much so that Seiko, when they invented it for the 6159-7010 divers, uh, the, the grandfather tunas, they've continued to use it. They use it to this day. Uh, so it's a, it's a functional thing and it, clearly it works. And so there it is. So instead of saying, how do we deal with getting the helium out? Let's just make sure it never gets back in. That, those are the main differences in terms of depth. Okay, from Todd Shuck. Hi, Todd. Hey, Spencer. Keep up the great content. If you could only have five right. watches in your collection, what would you keep from what you have currently? Merry Christmas, Todd. Merry Christmas to you, Todd. Um, I thought about this. I have a lot of watches that I would have to keep. I would need to keep either for sentiment or value or something else like this. But I decided, thinking about this question, which is one that people ask everybody else a lot. Hey, what's your one watch? What's your three watches? my five watches. And I went through and I said, what are the ones, the watches that I would love the most that would cover me for every eventuality um, that would give me the most joy looking at my wrist and that I would not miss the others. And I, and I have them here. Let's see if I can do this for you. So we have 6159, 7001. We have my great uncle's Rolex 1016. We have my 2007 Omega Speed uh, Speed Timer, Speed Master. We have my 7549 7009 Golden Tuna. And we have my um, my 6, 6138 um, 7000 Slide Rule. And what I'll do is I'll break, I'll break right here. So here we'll do a little bit closer close up of these watches. And again, there are other ones that I would really love to have in my five watch collection, but really this, I mean, this covers everything, all, uh, every kind of crazy eventuality, like going to the watch meetup and got to wear something to impress the dudes. There you go. 6159, 7001. It's a pity. These are so valuable. It's ridiculous that they are so valuable because it's a really nice watch just in terms of design. It's beautiful, but also the case design is gorgeous. With this big, beautiful undercut like this, it just sits on the wrist so pertly. 
and it's not too tall, unlike the, the Marine Master that was made on this thing, which is super, like, high and chunky. This is just so nice and flat. It's got some lovely visual details. I love the gold hints, but also this, the little ring of metal inside the insert. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful watch. Seiko did basically everything right on these watches. There's a reason they're so collectible. They're just, they're beautiful. Beautiful watches. I wish they had a bracelet that fit them, but, you know, what are you going to do? Someday somebody's going to come up with a bracelet for these. I'm amazed they haven't, but someday somebody's going to do that. Oh, what a beautiful watch. Okay. My golden tuna. I just, this watch is so lovely. And again, it's titanium, so it's it's big, but it's light. Unlike the, the um, grandfather tuna, which has the, has the, shell, the sort of the big sort of, sort of flanges coming down here, this, with it being just around like this, actually decreases the visual size a bit. But the rest of the proportions are the same. It's got this lovely dial with this nice white loom and this beautiful handset that Seiko used at that time, which they still use now, though they've given it up for that new set with the big wide hour hand, which I don't like. But it's just, I mean, the 754X movements, they, they designed these new movements at that time off the 6309s, and they made them the best of the best, the best that they could for this saturation diver to be the tr true ultimate tool watch. Absolutely accurate. Able to, I can dial in one of these things to a few hundredths of a second per day. Accuracy, like they're really super accurate. And they're just, again, they're just eye-catching like this, you know, the little bit of gold hints, gold and black and white. It's just, it's a, just, a, just a gripping watch. Real sort of, you know, manly watch. Really lots of fun. My great uncle's Rolex. You know, this thing was a rusted block of garbage when it came here. It was just junk. And uh, I, I put a lot of work into this watch to bring this watch back to life. And I'm very proud of the job that I did. But not just because it was my great uncle's watch, and he was a very nice dude. Um, but because, I mean, again... Rolex did darn near everything right with this. It's a great design. It's a good dress watch size. It's extremely legible, very elegant. I mean, it's just, it's really nice. I wish, I wish it still had the original dial because I had an OCC dial in this, but, you know, the service dial will be fine. That's the original handset. I reloomed the original handset to match the service dial. There's a rivet bracelet. It's just, I mean, it's an elegant watch. I put this thing on a strap, too, and it just looks great. It's a great, great watch. Understated, and the movement's very solid. It's the original movement. I saved most of it. It's just, it covers me on every, like, dress watch, you know, thing that you could possibly imagine. Modern chronograph. I know people sniff at these, but I really do like these. I mean, there's a reason that they're so classic. They're twisted luck designs. It's simple, simple, simple way that they look. They're just, they're, they're the reason that these are so popular is because it's sort of a, that it's sort of a perfection. Seika, I'm sorry, Omega did darn near everything right here. This is uh, one of Larry Boulinay's SKX0113 bracelets, by the way. Um, so he has these bracelets and only, and, and I got one in and, and it'll, it drops onto this case with only a little bit of tweaking, just a little bit of bending and you can, the, the end links drop right onto this case. And I think it looks really nice because then the, it drops right off from the lugs versus the stock bracelet, which kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, it just, it just makes it really nice. And the last one is this. My slide rule. These are just cool. They the 6138 is pretty much my favorite Seiko movement. This is this is nice. It's just an unusual multifunction watch. I mean, because it's got the the slide rule thing on it and all that stuff, and it's just neat. It's a beautiful, beautiful watch. I love the insert and the quality of it, and just sort of the feel of it, the look of it. I love the curved top of the insert. It's just a really elegant and unusual piece. For a vintage, for a vintage piece, and I think those five would really sort of keep me going. I think that's pretty much that's all I would really need. I'd be perfectly happy with that. I mean, I wish I had more of a basic tool diver thing going on in here, but you know, this will get the job done. Okay, let's head back to the other video.
and uh, I'll break right there and I'll show off all five watches so you can see them. But those those are the ones that I, that I would like. I mean, if nothing else, because it covers me for everything. I've got a really serious diver. I've got a, a lovely, this slide rule chronograph is just so unusual. The uh, the Omega is just, I don't know, it's, it's so classy and so perfect. And people bitch about them because they think that they're overdone and too many people own them. But, well, there's a reason that they're such great watches. I mean, they're great watches. What one are we talking about? Oh, that's the one. If you look up, Robert Downey Jr. did a, an interview with GQ, and that's the only cheap watch he has. Yep, it's true. All the other ones are these crazy, like, Tag Heuer's and Patek Philippe's and stuff. But all of these, this would cover all of my bases. This would be everything. This is dress watches. This is sport. It's diver. It's vintage. It's modern. It's this. These five watches, that would set me up for pretty much the future I would be there are other ones I wish that were in this mix but long and short this would do everything that I needed everything to do especially when you go diving yeah and fix um oil rigs or whatever <laughs> it's true it's true the only one I that probably would have gone on here is I don't have a beater on here which would be my SUN 019 uh and I do wear that like when I'm working on the deck I wear it anyway that's about it uh I'm tired of being sick, and then Willa said, Mommy, I have a sore throat, which means it's another cold. She's yeah, we're driving to the gym, it's like, Mommy, my tummy hurts, and she's like, Ugh. She's been sick since August. And she just That's no sick. exaggeration. That's not an exaggeration. She's literally been sick since August. Yeah, I talked to her teacher, and she, the teacher said, out of all of her years of teaching, she's never been as sick as she's been this year. So. It's just it's just one rolls right into the other. I just, I, I, I don't understand it. Nope. So, I'm really tired. I'm tired too, boy, <laughs> and everything else like that. But, I will say it again, I will do my level best to have an odds and ends, this and that video this coming weekend. Though, of course, my in-laws are arriving on Sunday. And you have, to paint, the, you have to paint the bathroom. Ah, that, that, the bathroom, that's not just, that's only touch up a few spots. And that is not the, that's the same paint, you won't be able to tell the difference. I know, um, and, but then my mother said they're coming early on Sunday. Well, you know what, your mother can deal with it. <laughs> She can do it. I'll put her in the video. No, she wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it? No. no I'll, I'll, I'll have Bob do it then. All right, well, you know, wait, are we going to have another video before Christmas? Yeah. No. We are? No. Uh, well, you are. Well, I will, but we'll talk to you. Merry Christmas if Merry that's Christmas. how you roll. Yeah, Merry Christmas, like my Christmas shirt. Okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas if that's what you, if, if that's what you're down for. Okay, talk to you later.